okay, okay, I know. Loaded thumbnail, but I'm not kidding. There are things you need to know about these printers before spending money on the wrong one. It may seem simple on the outset. There's the Mars 4 and the Mars 4 Ultra. Surely the Ultra is better than the normal Mars 4? Well, it depends on what you want, because if you want the best print quality, then out of the box, the Mars 4 Ultra is not a better printer. And don't get me started on the Mars 4 Max and the Mars 4 DLP, those are completely different things, and I recommend you check out the two reviews of each if you're considering them. Links above and in the description. Today I'm focusing on the direct differences between the Mars 4 printers, which are the direct upgrades to the previous Mars 3s. So hi, I'm Ross, and this is Fohammer Videos. So yeah, that's true, the Mars 4 Ultra is not immediately better quality, but don't fret, you can make it slightly better quality than the base Mars 4 with one quick tweak. You may already know what it is because I've screamed about it enough, but this video is really for those people wondering, shall I get the Mars 4 or the Ultra, what are the key differences, and is that worth the extra outlay? So let's talk about them. Both printers are almost identical in silhouette, the basic Mars has a red lid and the Ultra comes in black. But as you look closer, you'll see that the Ultra has a metal chassis whilst the other is plastic. No benefit, but it's a bit sexier for your money. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same. Externally, power and USB ports are in the same place on both printers, and that means that the power's on the back and the USB port is on the front. Thanks, Elegoo! However, it's worth noting that with the Ultra, what cheapens the experience slightly is that the metal case is not flush to the upper body, and so you do get some slight UV leak during a print. It's not a big deal, but a rubber gasket wouldn't have gone amiss here. Inside, each printer is what Elegoo is calling a 9K screen, but 9K isn't a real thing, and even if it was, this isn't it. For more info on that, check out my rant on my Mars 4 9K video. But what they do have are screens with 8520 pixels on the X axis and 4320 on the Y axis in an area of approximately 153 by 78 millimeters. This means the pixels are only 18 microns, which, as you may know, is currently the smallest pixel size on the market and therefore capable of the highest quality LCD prints out there. There's also DLP printers, but they are far more for print accuracy than pixel to pixel quality. Now, whilst you would expect that each printer provides the same quality, because it's the same screen, there's more under the surface on each model to consider, and I'll come back to that in just a sec. Each printer comes with a box of supplies, including face masks, paper filters, enough gloves to last about a day, maybe three prints, and you also get a plastic scraper and a really decent metal scraper and a cheapo USB drive that you should replace with a SanDisk one ASAP. Though with the Ultra, you don't actually need it, and I'll come back to that too. Both printers come with a USB powered carbon filter that plugs into the USB port, and these work to remove any nasty resin smells. Though in my testing, it seems that they do nothing to remove VOCs. When it comes to printer operation, the main physical difference is the leveling mechanism. The base model has Elegoo's usual ball joint, and I've said for ages that these come dislodged and are a much weaker mechanism to the alternative. I know many people have said I'm wrong, and yeah, my experience with them has been hit or miss, but even Elegoo themselves must agree to a point because the Ultra comes with a four-point bolt mechanism, and I've never had one of these fail when leveled properly. And on that regard, for either printer, just loosen the bolts however many you've got, send the bed to the home position, then hold down on the plate as you tighten the bolts, and for the Ultra, do this in alternating corners, and do it with a quarter turn on each bolt at a time. Tightening just one corner fully could dislodge the other. Tighten them all as far as you can, just not so much that you thread the socket. And you'll know when the Mars 4 ball screw comes loose because you'll find that subsequent prints just aren't sticking to the bed. You can re-level it with resin in the vat, but it's messy, so wear gloves and have tissue handy. But anyway, once tight, just back out to the menu, press Z equals zero, and so many people miss this step and it's a big reason for printing fails. Elegoo, please put this button inside the Z movement menu. Now you may have noticed from the footage that each printer has a different UI. Whilst the basic Mars UI has everything you could really need, it does look a bit bland and outdated by now by competitors' standards. The new UI on the Ultra is thanks to the whole printer running on Linux OS. This UI is not only sexier, but a bit more in-depth too. The main feature is that you can edit a print settings from the UI, and whilst this may seem useless, try and imagine you're just dialing in a printer's exposure time. There's no need to go and re-slice it, just edit the exposure on the printer and then go again. 
or if you get a failed print and you know just a couple of tenths of a second exposure time would fix it, just clean the bed, change the settings and print again. And another unique feature in the Ultra menus is Wi-Fi because it's only available on this Mars 4 model so far. And the antenna for Wi-Fi actually connects up inside the printer under the hood. To get Wi-Fi working, all you need to do is use the UI to connect your local network, and so long as your PC is on that same network, when you slice your models in Chitu box, you'll see a network send option, and from here you can just send the print to the printer and start it remotely too. No need to ever use that USB drive again. Now one thing of note is that Elegoo has been pushing for Tango, that's the slicer, and I'm not keen on this slicer. For one reason, moving models around the build plate before slicing is just so cumbersome. So until they make this most basic of functions easier, I'm not touching it. So as mentioned, I've been using Chitubox for all my slicing, but there is an issue I've found. When I print miniatures, even with 18 micron prints, I'd still enable anti-aliasing on them just to eradicate all the visible voxel and layer lines. But these printers now use Elegoo's proprietary .gu format, and this is still new and is having some teething issues. For one, when you enable anti-aliasing, the file size is absolutely huge, sometimes so large that the files won't actually fit onto your USB drive, but the slicer won't warn you, and you'll end up printing a truncated file which will just fail at a certain percentage through. And the other problem is that, well, anti-aliasing just doesn't work, at least in the case of the Saturn printers anyway. But on the Mars 4s, when I enabled this, it caused everything on the LCD's horizontal axis to weirdly merge. Supports and all other parts just blended into different parts of the models. Now, at least on the Saturns, you could export your slices in the .ctb format and resolve both of these issues entirely. With the Mars, though, you're stuck with .goo unless you send it wirelessly and it uses .ctb as default. Now look, Elegoo will remedy this and chances are it's fixed before my video even goes live. So make sure you do the latest firmware updates, at least on the Ultra, that's as easy as pressing the option in the menus and it'll do it over the internet. Now the final thing I wanna talk about before print quality is the screen protector. Now, I accidentally said in one of my reviews that there is no screen protector, yet the Elegoo website says the Mar 4 comes with a plastic screen protector and the Ultra comes with a tempered glass one. But I can't see it or feel a screen protector on either printer. If there is one there, then it's under the tape around the LCD, which makes replacement tricky, if not impossible. Now, both printers did come with a sheet of plastic on the screen that clearly said remove before print, but under those was nothing. Was this the screen protector? Are Elegoo wrong about it? Or have I just been unlucky with the QA tester who checked both of these printers and my Saturns? If you've got one of these or any of these and have got similar findings, please let me know down in the comments because I'm wondering if it's just me. Also, while you're looking at stuff below the video, if you are considering buying either of these printers, it would do us a solid if you would just click our affiliate links in the description before making a purchase. This costs you nothing but a click and we'll make a commission, but more importantly, it tells Elegoo that our videos are valuable to you. It means they keep sending us printers and we can do more reviews for you in the future. In the case of this, I was sent the Ultra and I bought the normal Mars myself just to do some comparisons. Right, quality. Now, both printers are great, and if you watch my Mars 4 Ultra review, you may have thought I was hating on that printer. I wasn't. I said the printer's great, but ACF is a bad thing. And whilst I'm saying the printers are great, I just can't say amazing, because in this generation, we simply haven't had the quality jump we had when we went from, say, 4K to 8K. And even that wasn't that huge when we look back now. 2K to 4K was big. But when we look back, between now and 2K, it hasn't been that huge a jump. Prints have been fine since then, but the point is we're now well beyond the point of diminishing returns. These are great. They just aren't gonna wow anyone who's had a last generation printer. If you're going from 2K to this, then oh my God, but you'll get the same reaction if you went from 2K to 4K or 2K to 8K. So it is what it is. Let's stop judging these around quality. It's great here, but it's not mind blowing. And the thing is, in order to get the most out of a super high resolution printer like this, you're gonna need a resin capable of rendering that detail. And all the ones I've seen which are this sharp are very brittle. And by polling my own community, I've found that most people don't use those resins. Bar the odd few specialist cases, most people just use standard or more durable resins so that the models they print can actually survive basic transportation. And this is exactly why we released Wargamer. 
because it's the perfect balance of sharpness and durability for miniatures and you can see how detailed it is and yet it's still smooth where it needs to be and models printed with this are just like store-bought plastic models if not a bit more durable and have the benefits of being sharper because they're 3D printed. Now when it comes to these printers you need to know that the Ultra uses a different type of release film. Now whilst I've seen no indication that the Ultra Z-axis motor is any faster, this film will allow the resin to release 30% easier, so you can up your print speed settings just a tad. But the drawback is, because this ACF film is frosted, it will diffuse the projected image on each layer, and that'll soften the prints. Now don't get me wrong, these prints aren't bad and this diffusion is another element that reduces layer and voxel lines, but it's a very analog way to do it. I much prefer the accurate control from using printer settings and enabling anti-aliasing whilst keeping the print as sharp as possible. However, I've now had mixed results with ACF film. On most printers, it does soften the print and shows some weird crazy crosshatch lines on the surface, and Vogg has shown this on his videos too, just like Uncle Jesse. But for some reason I still don't understand, I just don't get this with the Saturn 3. Perhaps that's a different brand of ACF, or I just got lucky and there's a bit of a lottery with the material over how good it is when you get it. But in the case of the Mars 4 Ultra, the ACF did diffuse my prints and leave a cross hatching on every surface. However, you can easily swap this ACF with the clear PFA film that you just get on the normal Mars 4. And I know I had complaints that I should have just done this earlier by swapping the ACF like Vogman did, but I knew the Mars 4 was coming, and if I'd done that, I wouldn't have then been able to do this test where I used the ACF on the base Mars 4 too. Now the good news is, when you use PFA on the Ultra, the prints are as good as the Mars 4. If not slightly better, the Ultra uses a frunal lens, which directs lights upwards towards the build plate. Without this, you do get some LCD bloat. Difference-wise, if you squint and turn your head and convince yourself a little, then the Ultra is slightly better than the Mars 4 when using PFA. Or is it? I don't know. It's not enough that it matters. And similarly with the Mars 4, stick some ACF on this and it blurs the print, but you can lift faster. So in summary, if you want the ultimate quality from an entry-level sized printer, both of these are absolutely ace. But the Mars 4 Ultra needs you to replace the ACF film with PFA if you want to get that extra quality. Most people have just opted to buy a second VAT and have one with PFA and one with ACF so that they can choose fast or detailed depending on what they want at the time. But the Ultra is still well worth the small upgrade price to me, just for the ease of use that's Wi-Fi and the more stable build plate levelling mechanism. And if you are looking at one of these and your budget's slightly bigger, don't discount the Saturn 3 range because honestly, the difference in print quality from this compared to the Saturn 3s, which have the convenience of a bigger blade, I'd go for the Saturn 3 any day of the week. The difference there is nothing. I can't even tell, even under a macro lens. I can't see it. But anyway, we're talking about the Marsers. Yeah, the Mars 4 is worth it to me to go for the Ultra. Is it worth it to you? Well, that's for you to decide. And whatever you go with, that is the best decision. I can only show you the door, you have to walk through it. Please click the like button if this helped you and drop a comment below to feed the YouTube algorithm so we can help more people just by being seen. I want to say thanks for watching and thanks to our members who got early access to this video along with many others and exclusive content too. So until next time, hasta la vista babies, Fohammer out.